So welcome everyone in person and online to the last day of week two uh, of the DGI workshop. So today we have a sneaky preview of the topics of week three with uh, Bachaki from Cornell that will tell us about crunching solutions to the hierarchy problem. Please, Chaba. Very much. Can you hear me well? Very good. So again, thanks uh, to the organizers and it's really great to be finally back to meeting everybody in person and we hope that it's going to stay like this now for good um, so i will be talking about the work that uh, mainly about this first one that we have been doing with actually two of the co-organizers of this workshop rafaela and uh, michael like michael is going to be here starting next week and i guess rafael around the end of the workshop and my cornell student excellent student amin ishmael and I, uh, if I have a little time at the end, I will also uh, tell you about a related idea that uh, we did with Itai, who was here last week, and also Michael and Tomer. And of course, nobody knows when Tomer is actually coming, hopefully at some point. All right, very good. Okay, so now it doesn't switch anymore. The slides. All right, very good. So here's a little outline that I would like to... Uh, uh, show you. So I will tell you a little bit at the beginning about the hierarchy problem and the type of approaches uh, that we sort of know about. And that's, of course, you know, Savas made my job very easy uh, with his talk on Wednesday. Um, with a little bit of repetition of that. And then I come main to our, our uh, proposal, uh, sort of a different type of solution to the Higgs hierarchy problem. And I show you a concrete implementation in terms of a uh, 5D warped extra dimensional setup. And this one, in fact, will have experimental consequences. So uh, we'll, we'll see what those are. And as I said, if I have a little bit time left at the end, I will also tell you some comments about uh, our other related idea, uh, which is sort of having a crunching solution to the cosmological constant problem instead of the, uh, uh, the ordinary hierarchy problem. Okay, so as we heard and everybody knows, you know, there is a hierarchy problem. And the hierarchy problem is that elementary scalars are expected to be ultra heavy. Their masses are not protected by symmetries. So they are actually sensitive to UV scale physics. And in these calculations, lambda is really a stand in for whatever, you know, scale new physics you assume is appearing, you know. If you assume that there's any new scale of physics, the Higgs is expected to be very sensitive to that. And we don't understand why the Higgs mass was not pulled up to those very high scales, wherever new physics uh, comes in. Okay. So how do we usually solve this problem? That has been the program starting like the 1980s up till you know, relatively recently. I call this the symmetry-based approach. You just say, well, okay, you know, if the Higgs is going to be pulled up to whatever scale the new physics says, that scale is probably not too far away from us. So maybe at the TV scale where it would be natural to have a Higgs at around 100 GeV. And that new physics should be special, should be such that, you know, once it comes in, it actually will shield us from additional UV corrections once you introduce that new physics at the TV scale. Okay, so that was the approach that uh, we have been uh, considering for a long time. And, you know, the main ideas are, you know, of course, supersymmetry, as we heard from Savas, composite mass, extra dimensions, those are, you know, basically two different ways of expressing the same ideas, basically saying the Higgs is not elementary, you know, there's some form factor that is going to shut off the contributions beyond the, the scale there, where, where you start seeing its uh, uh, actual ingredients, okay? And in these symmetry-based approaches, again, there has to be new physics showing up at the TEV. And typically, not in every uh, model, but typically we expect colored particles showing up at that scale. We, you know, generically call them top partners because the top gives you the most severe version of the hierarchy problem. So those are the most important ones. Those are the ones that, that you really have to uh, uh, 
uh, you know, have to have in these kind of models. And well, that was really, uh, you know, really nice. Now, the, the only problem we have is that now these top partners are being probed around the PV scale and we haven't seen them. So that is really starting to put these models under serious stress. And so if anybody is wondering why we see fewer and fewer papers on you know, supersymmetry or extra dimensional model building is because you know, the region where you know, these models would have been the most natural, uh, you know, they are starting to actually get experimentally ruled out. So here I just put up a slide about you know, one of the versions. You know, so this would be you know, in one of these composite models there, you know, the top part would have the same spin as the top. So spin one half top partners, and you see that you know the bounds are are creeping up over a TV, and uh, you know usually you you need these top partners to be slightly below the TV scale in order for the model to be completely natural. So you know it's uh, starting to to not look that great for all of these these models. Okay, now you know it's it's not like you know. There are no more ways to 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 you know to tweak uh, to tweak around with it. For example, you know you can still have you know some constraints that can be avoided in the so-called neutral naturalness or twin Higgs type models. You know those models are starting to become really complicated. So you know it's uh, it's it's of course very possible, and I, I have worked on them, so I don't have anything bad to say. I'm just saying you know that you know. Uh, you you know you are, you are trying to add more and more twists and then at some point you're still wondering you know whether you know that uh, that model is now so so baroque that that maybe maybe that's not the right way to go but they are still possible you know they will give you deviations of the Higgs couplings even if you know neutral naturalness is hiding the uh, other you know top partners pretty uh, effectively so eventually those will also be tested all right, so that's the direction that uh, you know we have been following for a long time. Now, there's another sort of related direction that has is starting to become pretty uh, popular, uh, and it's of course motivated by the fact that we haven't uh, observed uh, uh, new particles at the LHC. Is is so-called you know cosmological? I call this under the title cosmological selection re relaxation type uh, ideas. And, and the idea in this model says that, well, the correction to the Higgs mass is in fact not suppressed, okay? But somehow, you know, there, there, there's a dynamics that is going to lead to the selection of a realistic vacuum in the theory. There's uh, some cosmological mechanism that allows us, for example, to scan over the uh, possible values of the Higgs mass as the universe is expanding and that, in, for example, in this real relaxion idea that field is rolling and you know something special is happening when we are exactly hitting you know the electroweak phase transition and then that rolling would stop okay so i think you know this is indeed a very interesting direction i think the models are quite baroque or the regions of parameters are weird but again you know this has you know just been started relatively recently so you know, there could be other interesting directions. So I, I just wanted to make sure that people know about this. Now, the, the third approach um, or the other big kind of approach that uh, people have been pursuing is the anthropic approach. Yes, so, so we heard a lot about this uh, uh, from Savas uh, on Wednesday. So, so in this approach, you know, there would be a multiverse so that that would tell you that there are regions of uh, of the universe where uh, each patch has for example a different value of the Higgs mass if we are trying to apply the multiverse idea uh, specifically to the hierarchy problem and order one quartix and then you know the idea would be as uh, as we heard that you know in the fully anthropic approach to 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 the hierarchy problem that only patches with a small Higgs web would be able to support life. Otherwise, there would be no chemistry. And you know, that's the reason why the Higgs web is, uh, is, is light. Okay. Now, again, you know, one big problem is that it's very hard to experimentally verify. Though Nima's comments, you know, were actually pretty nice. Uh, I, I really like those uh, about the fact that, okay, you know, 
we, we may not be able to test those other vacua directly, but the fact that they, they, they could or should exist, yes, maybe we, we, we could be able to test uh, locally. Of course, for that, we need a concrete model of the multiverse, but uh, anyways. And of course, as we heard, this is also sort of the motivation for uh, the split supersymmetry idea that uh, we heard from Savas uh, on, on Wednesday. Okay, so these are sort of the main approaches. And so I would like to uh, offer something that is slightly different from these approaches uh, that we have been uh, thinking about. So we call this the crunching solution, but to, to sort of take the big picture view, what we would be saying is that our proposal is sort of a mixture of these ideas that, uh, that we have heard. We, we would sort of like to think that we are taking the best aspects of each of these approaches. Maybe you'll think we are taking the worst aspect, but whatever. I mean, that, that's how we would like to think about it. And so we will still assume that there's a multiverse uh, uh, present. So we will assume that there are many different patches in the universe that where, where, the, where the Higgs mass and the Higgs web would be very different. Okay, so that starting point, we are, we are still going to be taking the place where we are going to be deviating from the anthropic approach is that we are not going to sort of try arguing that, well, you know, we could only live in particular patches, uh, but rather what we would, we would like to do is we would like to introduce a dynamics that actually uh, physically eliminates the, the patches of the universe where the Higgs web is sort of very large or zero, where in meaning that the Higgs mass parameter is negative. Okay, so the way we are going to be do, doing this is, so, so, so we want those regions of space to actually physically crunch, okay? And, and what we will be assuming is that there is, in addition to the multiverse, there is a hidden CFT, which is spontaneously broken. Okay, and uh, I, I will, of course, explain, you know, the, 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 the model in more detail uh, soon. And uh, the ground state of this CFT, of this conformal field theory, because it's spontaneously broken, it, it has a very large and negative vacuum energy. Okay, so whenever, whenever you are in the ground state of the CFT, the expectation would be that that patch of the of the universe where where the where the CFT settles to its actual minimum, that that region is going to rapidly crunch because you have a very large negative vacuum energy there. Okay. And so again, so this is just a, a, a small cartoon. Yes. So there's a there's a true minimum. This is, for example, the sky. So this is basically the field that is telling you how much you know, the CFT is spontaneously broken. You can think of it as being the dilaton, which is also you know, the Goldstone boson of spontaneous uh, scale invariance breaking. And it's true minimum is you know, somewhere far out with a very large uh, uh, negative, uh, vacuum, uh, neg negative uh, uh, vacuum energy. Okay. I am confused. You're saying it, it has to be much bigger. Do you mean much less than the inflationary energy? Um, yeah. But right, right. You, because you, uh, otherwise, you know, inflation would bring you back or something. We want this to, to happen irrespective of whether, you know, things are inflating or not. So we want these regions to just crunch, to just die. Okay, so then, Okay, so, so, so far, you know, this is a very boring universe, yes, because, you know, if, if this was all, yes, then, then we wouldn't have anything left, uh, left by now. But what we are, what we are uh, saying is that the CFT is actually such that some of the constituents, some of the particles, let's just call them techniquarts just for the sake of it. Uh, so, so, you know, some of the matter fields of the CFT are actually charged under our SU2 electroweak symmetry which is eventually going to be leading to an interaction between the dilaton, the, the field that is uh, responsible for uh, the, the scale invariance breaking and the standard model Higgs. Okay. And what we would like to do is, is to find a situation where the stability of this dilaton 
potential will depend actually on the value of the Higgs web. Okay. So what, what we are trying to do is, let me see if I have a little plot here, yes. So what we are trying to do here is to sort of engineer a second minimum in the dilaton potential, okay? But this one will exist only if the Higgs wave is within a particular range, okay? So this is now supposed to be a coupled potential and this is just, you know, of course, one particular cross section of that potential. And what we are saying is that that if the Higgs wave is in a particular range, then you are going to have the second metastable minimum for the uh, for the dilaton potential. And uh, uh, if uh, if if the Higgs wave is very large, or if the Higgs wave is zero, then actually you are just going to you know roll down to the true minimum of uh, uh, of your of your uh, of your dilaton potential. And you're going to be crunching. Okay, so that's that's the idea. So the one the one the patches that have the large Higgs webs are vanishing, they will dynamically crunch. And after a long period of time, only the patches where the Higgs web is small are actually going to be surviving. So after a long time, if you look at our universe, the only patches that you're gonna be having are the ones with small Higgs webs. Okay, so here we won't have to. Be resorting to an anthropic type of uh, uh, yes. First of all, why are you rejecting the crunching? I mean, what's wrong with an ADS geometry? So you know, if you just look at the gravitational expansion of an ADS geometry, you know, it's pure ADS. You know, it's just just going to crunch. Okay, why are you rejecting them? Well, there, you know, it's empty, basically, you know, it's going to be like an empty shell, yes? Yeah, so what's wrong with that? You're doing dynamics, you're not doing anthropics, you're not requiring right. that it's populated right. with right. matter. I mean, there's, you know, there's nothing there, yes? It's, it's basically, empty, you know. Yeah, so then most I of mean, your I'm not, universes I'm not, I'm is... I'm not rejecting it, I'm just saying there's nothing there, yes? So it's... You are rejecting it. It's there in your theory, and you're but... rejecting it because it's empty. It's... That's an anthropic requirement. Well, okay. So yeah, so 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 that's a good question. You know, is this really truly not anthropics? Yeah. So, or is this just another way of phrasing it? You know, that's a little bit of philosophy. You know, you could also ask. You know, so in fact, you know, what I'm saying is that you know only the regions that are you know if you believe that okay, so those others are not there. Yes. You know, basically the regions that are very long lived. Yes, are the ones you know where we live. Yes. So. So now I exchange sort of the condition for, you know, something having a very long lifetime. Yes. So if you count vacua, you still have many vacua. But but if Universe you count the vacua the now, yes. If you count the vacua now, you basically only have regions of space, physical regions of space where the Higgs wave is. That small. you don't. And. Uh, Well, again, you know, there, you know, there's, there's, uh, there's no physical, you know, it's, there's, you know, I would say that a crunched region of space, yes, there's, you know, there's, you know, it's not space, but. but uh, I mean, it, it's like an, I would think, the way I was thinking about ADS is basically it's an empty shell, yes. It's a. Part of of your right right so but empty shells yes so so there's nothing there yes yeah so there's, so there's nothing there so, so we can only right so you know i mean you may you know you may just say that well this is a different way of I, you know, you could say this is a different dynamical interpretation implementation of anthropics. Yes. Another question is, how do you populate it? How do you populate the? Yeah. Right. So, you you mean at the beginning? Yeah, of course. Right. So so that's something that we didn't try to you know to address. You know, what what is the mechanism for populating the multiverse? But it doesn't that doesn't seem to be playing an important role specifically for. Uh, in. Start from the ADS vacuum. I can have initial conditions that start from ADS vacuum. Um, you, 
you mean the, oh you mean how oh we are assuming that there is some inflation yes how does it happen if so yeah, again, so you know this is this is this this is supposed to be a theory after inflation yes so we assume that that you have undergone an ordinary period of inflation you know reheating you know you reheated every patch yes how do you do that? Because in, in the ordinary so, so, landscape, yeah. there is eternal inflation that right. provides you a mechanism to right. populate so, so, in every so we necessary. Have add, you know, we have to add a sector like that. And you know, that, that's a separate question. Yeah. It's not a separate question that's, because part of the is the measure problem. Right. So, yeah. so are you, you, there is a measure problem. The other question is in the small Higgs and small. Sorry, in the. Is the small Higgs vacuum logical constant the measure value that we have right so so we didn't claim that we solved the cosmological constant okay value. then you have so, a so this is this is a yeah yeah absolutely so, so that reintroduces the tuning that you had before i'm sorry no i mean this is the a, coincidence of having the same vacuum that has a small cosmological constant which you don't want to argue anthropically right. for with the same value that you have the small higgs vev that's a coincidence of one part in 10 to the 30, which is the tuning you had before. Well, again, as I said, you know, I mean, we, we did not try to address the cosmological constant problem. Here. I don't see how you cannot address it without arguing. So you want to argue about dynamics, but it's not clear this is not nothing more than anthropics repackaged. You know, I, I think this is in the end a little bit of a philosophical question. Yes, you know, what do you call it? Yes. So, you know, I, these are reasonable questions. You know, is this really, you know, totally different or, you know, it's just another way of doing anthropics? You know, I, I'd be happy to discuss that. You know, again, you know, what we are saying is we have a dynamical way of, you know, killing the vacua that. Dynamics. That's the argument. You don't right. explain right. why you're rejecting a class of vacuum and you're not explaining how it's populated. Can, sorry, can so I? The dynamics you? is so, incomplete. So, so, so it's true that this is only part of the theory. Yes. So you have to augment it with, uh, you know, with the, uh, with the, uh, you know, but you know, it's it's the generic mechanisms for populating multiverses. You know, they seem to. That's be That's eternal fun. inflation, right? I'm sorry. No, that's, that's not true. That's not true. That has a measure problem. So that's not that's I, not true. I don't Can see I? Any right, but but then you know we are we are killing those those regions. Yes. I, I, well, I, I would suggest to let okay. Bob go on. I mean, we have a long time for discussion later. Michael. Uh, ah, Mike. Hello. Yeah, can I, sorry, can I, can, so can I intercede? The, so about the, there were two questions. I think it was Mina asking, right? I cannot see. Yes. So, so, so there were, there were two questions. One, how is this coupled to a mechanism for populating the, the landscape? And second, whether this is uh, just anthropic uh, re, repackage. So about the first, uh, the, uh, it's not true that the only way to populate the landscape is with eternal inflation. Actually, any long inflation, n even non-eternal, can in principle populate the landscape. We have showed this just by generically looking at decay widths in uh, in uh, uh, in our in our previous paper. But it's it's uh, I mean, there's there's nothing that says that you cannot populate a landscape with in in uh, inflation that is long but not eternal. In in fact, that because the number of uh, Batches is exponential with the number of e folds. You you very quickly uh, uh, populate many many uh, as many vacua as as you want as long as there's not exponentially many vacua. So so that that is the first. Of course, if you populate if you couple this to an, an eternal inflation mechanism, then then yeah, we have the measure problem. We don't know what we're doing, but it seems completely plausible. You can couple this to a non-eternal inflation that populates enough vacua. And then, then there's 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 not really a, a problem of saying whether whether this mechanism by itself is uh, is plausible because we can say okay there's a, there's you start with some pretty generic initial conditions you will populate uh, uh, many vacua during a long enough inflation that's still not eternal and then those vacua that you populated that lead to a crunch will very early on stop inflating and will remain as Chaba said in an empty shell. That is that is uh, uh, just sitting there, and 
And so to answer also another question that 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 that, uh, uh, that was asked was about the the how how is this coupled to the uh, cosmological constant problem? So because of this, because of how uh, this mechanism is completely decoupled from what happens earlier on, it seems completely plausible that that uh, that that you can you can have an entropic a usual almost usual entropic solution to the CC problem with one small caveat that I can talk about later and uh, uh, coupled to this mechanism as it is. So you have an initial landscape, it's going to choose vacua that have different values of the CC, different values of the Higgs VEV with, for any value of the CC, as long as the, the range is not bigger than the, 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 this huge drop in the vacuum energy, you will, uh, 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 for any value of the CC, if the Higgs VEV is, is, uh, doesn't have the correct value, that, that patch will crunch. So now you will have different values of the CC, but all of them will have a small Higgs VEV. And later on, of course, once, once uh, uh, the, that CC will start to dominate, only those that have, uh, that have uh, uh, a, uh, 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 that, that, that have a small value of the CC will have uh, structure in life. So that seems plausible. The only thing, the only caveat, as I said, is that it seems like you can, you need to have a, a uh, 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 of course, after, after you have, after you have that, uh, the second CC domination, that second part can be eternally inflating by itself. But of, co but of course, uh, for that, we, we also have, have our first paper, which is exactly what maybe Chaba is going to uh, mention it towards the end of his talk, which is about... Anyway, <laughs> Michael, because this doesn't answer the question. Yeah, yeah, let's, let's, yeah. let's, let's let Shaba finish and... Oh, that's yeah. okay with me. Yes. Which is, just to, just to compare apples to apples, uh, comparing your solution, uh, to the atomic principle solution of, right. uh, you know, Donahue at all. Right. In the case of Donahue, one can say that they had a order of magnitude prediction of the weak scale uh, to be around 80 GeV. So that was an output of the atomic principle. Right. Uh, in your case, right. there is no such prediction. The TV I is an input. Think so, yes. I don't think in this paper there is a prediction for the TV yeah, scale. Yeah. It says for the specific value of the TV scale. Just right. All right. Please. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go on. Okay. Very good. Okay. So again, you know, the the main idea is to have a coupling between the dilaton. Yeah. So this is the field that is uh basically telling you uh, about the nature of the spontaneous breaking of conformality, yes, and uh, the Higgs. And so, so, the, so, so, so the, 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 the true valve of the dilaton field is the one that is giving rise to the large negative cosmological constant. And then again, the idea is that we are going to be having a coupled system where uh, a second minimum could appear depending on where uh, the Higgs web actually is, okay? So we have a particular setup where we uh, have studied whether, you know, that, that uh, uh, solution is possible or not. So we took a, yes? It's okay, I, I have time. <laughs> this type of I just won't finish. In this type of constructions, normally you have a good control of the potential minimum right but close to the origin uh, you don't so we'll discuss you know, so what, how so you think you you control the potential so close to the origin so so well depends on you know what exactly the origin is yes so i suppose that is uh, very so the the true minimum is much more so it's level is much bigger than tv so 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 you know, there is a there is a scale at which you know this breaks down yes yeah the dilaton description and it, you know it's going to be interesting because in fact that's a region that you really want to avoid mm. because there you could get stuck in eternal inflation so we are actually going to make sure that 
you know, at the very end, you know, if I have time, I'll explain that they are going to add an extra dynamics that makes sure that you're away from that region. Not, not, not the, you know, not, not this region here, yes, but the really small, you know, I mean, okay. the real, there is the other, so, there is really, I think, uh, keeping so, so, so of course, the con there, theoretical control around the origin. Uh, so exactly. it's the same in the Coleman Weinberg uh, effective potential. Right, right. But what, what I'm so trying the to say is you don't really know the potential. That, that this is not in the region that the, that the effective dilaton theory is breaking down. There is a region where the effective dilaton theory is breaking down. Yes, where you know, like you know, your quartix, you know, would become order one, and you know, you lose. Uh, but 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 that's a region that we want to stay away, anyways. It turns out. So so we are going to make sure that you are actually not living in that region. Okay, so that's something that's another, uh, you know, little piece that you will have to be added and, uh, and I'm going to get to that, maybe, maybe. Please, yeah, yeah, we'll take more no, time later, okay. don't worry. I mean, I, as I said, I have time. It's, uh... We too. <laughs> <laughs> All right, very good. So, uh, again, so we have, uh, you know, the usual construction in terms of a warped extra dimension. Um, so there's a there's a UV brain and then there's an IR brain, and you know we are just going to be simple-minded and for now identify the uh, position of the IR brain with the uh, with the dilaton or the radion field, and uh, we'll assume that this extra dimension is uh, uh, stabilized by uh, you know an extra bulk scalar field, so that would be the Goldberger Weiss field, and that stabilization gives rise to a potential for uh, the dilaton itself. Okay, so this is this uh, usual Goldberger Weiss type uh, uh, potential. So there's a chi to the four. So that's a term that is generically present in conformal field theories for the dilaton. Okay, because a chi to the four is actually uh, conformally in uh, is scale invariant. So so you don't actually. Uh, so Goldstone's theorem for, for broken scale invariance is slightly different than uh, for ordinary fields, so chi to the four is allowed. And this one would be an explicit breaking term. And that term is present there specifically because we added this Goldberger Weiss field into the bulk, which uh, actually corresponds to uh, a small explicit breaking of conformality. Okay, so... Again, this is just a little bit of technical stuff, maybe not that important, you know, when you do the calculation and you, the way you identify the dilaton field, you have to be careful about its uh, uh, canonical normalization. Again, you know, the chi to the four is the scale invariant term and the chi to the four plus delta is the effect of the small explicit breaking. Okay, so now how about the Higgs? Yes, so the Higgs has to somehow play a role, yes. Uh, but of course, you know, we don't want this to be the ordinary RS solution to the hierarchy problem. So in RS, you would put the Higgs on the IR brain. Yes, so they, we are not doing that. Yes, we are putting the Higgs on the UV brain and uh, slightly extend it in the bulk. By extended, by slightly, I mean that the profile will not be very strongly changing. Okay, of course, you have to have it extended into the bulk. Otherwise, you know, it's not going to interact with the dilaton. So you won't be able to get a, a mixing if it's just purely on the UV brain, yes? So, so the kind of situation that we have in mind is that you have an elementary Higgs is sitting on the UV brain. This, you know, this mass, Higgs mass parameter is the parameter that is varying in different patches, okay? And, you know, could be very large, very small in the different patches uh, that, uh, uh, that you are looking at. And uh, again, you know, we are assuming that the, uh, the, 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 the that there is a mild uh, dependence of the Higgs profile on the extra dimension. So that depends on exactly what kind of bulk mass parameter you are adding into uh, 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 in, in to your Higgs potential. Then, of course, you can do the usual story. You can find, you know, what the behavior of the uh, of the profile of the Higgs is as a function of the uh, of the distance along the extra dimension, and you can see, you know, what how the uh, how the Higgs wave on the IR brain scales as a function of the UV brain uh, Higgs wave that is supposed to be an input. Yeah, so that's supposed to be a source that is there because you have an elementary Higgs potential on the UV brain. Okay. 
So this is basically the IR value of the uh, of the Higgs web. Okay, so it's going to have now a dilaton dependence. Yes, because again, you know, it is slightly dependent on uh, the side on on the position along the extra dimension. And then, how do you get additional terms that are now mixing the Higgs and the dilaton with each other? But now it's very easy, as you can just add localized terms, localized like quadratic and quartic terms for the Higgs on the IR brain. Yes, and those in the effective potential are now going to be actually dilaton dependent. Okay, so that's how we are getting in this particular construction uh, the, uh, the the concrete. Uh, uh, way of mixing the, the Higgs with the dilaton. And again, you know, there's a simple CFT interpretation. So this is the usual interpretation of Goldberger Weiss, that you have an operator that is slightly different in the bulk uh, from dimension four. But on top of it, you are assuming that now there's an additional uh, operator in the CFT that is now an SU2 doublet. Yeah? So that's, of course, very important. Otherwise, you're not going to get a, a an interaction between the Higgs and the dilaton. And then again, you can show that with these op operators, you are indeed going to get in the CFT, the type of Higgs potential that I have been uh, uh, assuming. Okay, very good. So here's the full potential. This is just the usual standard model Higgs potential, again, assumed to be elementary. This is the usual Goldberger Weiss potential that is assumed to be, uh, you know, just uh, you know, chi to the four and chi to the four plus delta. And then the essential new ingredient is this mixing piece between the Higgs and the dilaton, okay? And so what we want to make sure is we choose our parameters in the theory such that we make sure that the secondary minimum, yeah, so, so this is how the potential would look like from afar, irrespective of what potentials and what values for the, uh, uh, what values for the Higgs web you are, you are picking, but very close to the origin, okay, very close to the origin, you can see that depending on the Higgs web, yes, it depends, of course, you know exactly what parameters you're choosing uh, for your additional couplings here, yes, depending on the Higgs web, uh, uh, you may or may not actually uh, generate a secondary minimum in your potential. Okay, very good. So, of course, you know, what we then want to make sure is find out, you know, what is the critical value for the Higgs be beyond which the secondary minimum is not going to exist so that you can go ahead and, you know, just minimize, you know, get the inflection point uh, uh, of, uh, of, of, uh, of your potential. And then also find, you know, what the value of your potential, of, of your dilaton is at uh, the minimum, at the secondary minimum. Okay, so this is again you know, some complicated expressions of these uh, additional couplings that you are adding in. Now, again, so the so what is now setting the uh, the critical value of the Higgs web? Yes, well, so so that's that's the expression over here. Yes, yeah? so so that's you know you just go ahead and find you know what the inflection point of the uh, of your potential is, and that is what is going to set the critical value of the Higgs web. And that is the one again that is going to tell you, uh, you know, what is the what is the maximal value for the Higgs web for which the secondary minimum in the potential exists. So if the Higgs web is smaller than that, then you know you are not going to crunch. If the Higgs web is greater than that, then 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 your dynamics is going to crunch. Okay. So you see that technically, you know, this hierarchy looks quite a bit like. The usual, you know, RS solution to the hierarchy uh, with Goldberger Weiss mechanism. But of course, you know, this is very different in the sense that in our case, the Higgses are not composite. They are not peaked on the IR brain. Yes. And, uh, you know, there's a very different underlying reason for why the, uh, the, the, the hierarchy is, uh, is being solved here. Okay, very good. So, so then, you know, you can go through the details uh, of, uh, of finding you know what the values of the parameters are that uh, are uh, needed for you in order to get the uh, get the correct value of uh, of, of your critical uh, Higgs web. Yes, so so first of all, you know it turns out that you know none of these localized couplings can be very large. Otherwise, you will get a, a lambda pole. So you can just uh, do an NDA 
for you know the this additional quartic that you're adding on the uh, on the IR brain. So that can't be you know like 15 or or 100. Yes, there's there's an upper value for that. And then uh, uh, you can you can check. Uh, you know that you actually need to make sure that there is a little bit of a hierarchy between your Higgs web and the actual minimum where the dilaton is sitting. And the, the reason is that in this particular implementation, we have SU2 in the bulk. Yes, that was important. Since the Higgs is in the bulk, you know, the SU2 has no choice but to be in the bulk, which means that there will be gauge uh, boson KK modes showing up in this theory. We don't really need them. They are not solving, they are not helping the hierarchy, yes, but they are nevertheless there. And we know experimentally that, you know, they can't be super light. Okay, so these, these beasts, these KK gauge bosons have to be at least three or four TV from the similar LHC bounds as we said for the, uh, uh, for, for, for the top partners. And that is going to tell you that there has to be a little bit of a hierarchy between the minimum of the uh, of your dilaton potential and the Higgs web, which we know, you know, is of the order of a few hundred GeV. Yes, so there's a factor of 0.1 here, and then if you shove in the numbers in order to get this hierarchy, it tells you that some of the couplings uh, in 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 your theory, these additional this uh, these quadratic couplings, in order to get this hierarchy, yes, has to have to be of the order of 10 to the minus two times. You know this coupling, which again, you know, you cannot take very large; otherwise, you're going to run into a Landau pole. Okay, so uh, so that's one thing, and the other thing is that uh, actually uh, you want to make sure that uh, uh, at uh, at the critical values uh, for the for the dilaton uh, potential, uh, where 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 the secondary minimum is existing, actually. This mixing with the Higgs is dominating over the Goldberger Weiss potential. So the assumption will be that the Goldberger Weiss uh, couplings themselves are actually very small. Okay. So then, if you put all of this together, what you then you can just go ahead and calculate. You know, so so what what are the properties of the dilaton? We have the potential. We know what region of parameter space we have to choose, and so we have here some semi-analytic expression. For the mass and the and the mixing angle of the of the Higgs and the dilaton, and it turns out that the dilaton has to be in a pretty uh, uh, well-defined range with the type of parameters that we are interested in. So it has to be somewhere between 100 MeV and 10 GeV. Okay, so so it's got to be a light dilaton, but not ultra light. And the mixing between the uh, Higgs and the, the dilaton. Uh, based on the parameters that we have, so it's actually given by the ratio of the Higgs uh, mass and the dilaton mass, is also very small. Okay, and so so we are going to be uh, left with a dilaton that uh, is pretty light, and it's inheriting the couplings of the Higgs boson due to the mixing uh, with the Higgs, but this mixing angle is very small. Okay, so that's the type of uh, particle that this setup is predicting for you. Except there will also be because the gauge bosons, the SU2 gauge bosons are in the bulk, there will be direct couplings also between the dilaton and all your uh, standard model gauge bosons. Now it turns out that for the W and the Z, these are already subleading to the, the couplings that you uh, are inheriting from the Higgs mixing. But for the photon, actually, this direct coupling is going to be uh, the leading one. Okay, so yes. So given the fact that you have an operator with the quantum numbers of the Higgs, don't you have a composite Higgs also? Um, do I have a composite Higgs? Uh, that's, yeah, but it doesn't have to be light. Um, and uh, it doesn't have to couple, I guess. So I guess. Well, at best it will be inert, but uh, I'm, I'm not sure if it's, light, if it's heavy. So it could be inert, but. Uh, right. Yeah, there well, could be there could be another SU2 doublet, yes. So a second. I think Higgs. before the mixing of the dilaton, there is the mixing with the composite Higgs. So right. probably your But this one doesn't have to get a VAB or anything, yes. So it's just another it has a mixing. So Sorry? some VAB will it will have some VAB for sure. 
has a linear coupling. Um, yeah, so, but you know, uh, the VAV will depend on the ratio of the mass of the elementary Higgs and this guy, yes, so could be quite a bit, quite a bit smaller. Okay. Right. You know, this could be, you know, uh, given several the, TV. Uh, or the TV? Yeah, it could be several TV. Yes. Right, because you know, I mean, the 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 dilaton VAV yes is is setting a mass scale of the order of because we are trying to put the W and the Z at three four TV yes. So mm -hmm. This one probably you know if it does exist, I haven't thought about it. Um, would be probably around the same mass yes. So probably if if it exists, it probably has negligible VAV yes and mm -hmm. heavy yes. So. So, so that, that's a good question. You know, this could be an additional, you know. Uh, I think field. it is more certain than your KK uh, gluons, uh, etc. Because, right. Because that's an operator you are putting for sure. Right. Yeah. Uh, but we don't want the KK gluon. You know, we are actually trying to get rid of them. So, so we are not making a big deal of you know searching for that particular. Uh, you know, it would be better for us. If Effectively, at the end, you get uh, some mixing with a composite Higgs. So you have a partially composite Higgs at the end at some level. Well, I mean, if, if we do have a, a four TV guy, yes, or three yeah, TV know. guy, and uh, you know, there's a mixing, yeah, there probably there will be a little bit of composite Higgs, mm. yes. But it's also, you know, already a little bit, it's not totally flat, yes. So you know, from mm -hmm. that point of view, you would also think that, uh, yeah, it's a pro probably slightly composite. As you, as you know, um, if you want to have a light dilaton with right. respect to the confining scale, then you need a, light, a very small beta function. But if you have a small beta function, then it's difficult to confine. There are a bunch of papers. I think you have also right. one paper on that. Right. So that is difficult to have a light dilaton. But here you require to have a very light dilaton with respect to the confining scale. So what is your solution? So, so the problem, yes. Yeah, so you see the, 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 where this whole thing is buried, yes. Is uh, that uh, is Goldberger wise parameters? We choose them to be very small. Yes, for the quartic we are choosing very small. Yes, so, so for now you know that's just a small little hierarchy. Yes, so we don't you know I mean so so that's not so 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 I agree of course that's that's a problem and of course I'm aware of that, but uh, you know that's a little hierarchy type problem. Yes, it's not the you know. 10 to the 16 or 32 type hierarchy. It's, 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 it's why this coupling, yes, this Goldberger Weiss coupling is not order one, yes. Or if, in fact, maybe it's even 16 pi squared, I don't remember anymore. I mean, anyway, we, we did do the, the quantification. I didn't put here the quantification of all the, uh, all the tunings in the theory. And there is something like, you know, a fraction of a percent light tuning because of the choices for these parameters, yes, which is, partly equivalent to what you're asking, you know, the dilaton would not want to be as light, you know, it would want to be at the same scale as the, you know, as the VAD itself, yes, and we don't want that, yes, right. Okay, thanks. All right, very good. So uh, we did do the scanning of the part. Yes. Right, so one we'll sec, get to sec. that, we'll get to that. Oh. We'll get to that. It's, it's not, 10 to the, it's not 10 to the 16. It's uh, in our setup, we can only get to about 10 to the seven, just to, um, okay, very good. At least in the current uh, incarnation. Okay. So, so we did, you know, just, just wanted to, to know about the uh, properties of the, of this dilaton and, uh, and how we can experimentally search for it. So, so we did a big scan of the parameter space around the region where we know that, uh, we are going to get the right kind of uh, uh, the right kind of uh, of that. Okay. In fact, we did uh, two separate ones, and so so here are the uh, couplings of the dilaton to the various standard model particles. Uh, in fact, so these are branching uh, branching ratios. So as I said, you know the the coupling to the photon is usually the biggest one. It's coming from this additional bulk coupling that. Uh, uh, this additional bulk coupling that uh, because the photon is, the, is, is living in the bulk. 
and uh, so 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 we try to see you know in the different regions of uh, space where you have the mass and the mixing angle of the uh, of the dilaton you know whether whether or not these uh, uh, various uh, various points are actually allowed or uh, or excluded okay so so it turns out that many of the points are already excluded okay so because of the of the couplings to the for example to the b meson rare b decays already you know exclude so for example uh, this uh, blue box here so that so 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 the difference between the blue and the red is you know is is for two slightly different choices uh, for, uh, for, for, for the number of colors. So that's slightly different choices for the ADS space. And uh, you see that, uh, that you know, so some of the parameters are already excluded. There are some gaps left over here, you know, I think from Babar and, uh, you know, the slightly higher versions, of course, you know, this is where, where B physics is uh, not gonna be uh, very useful for you when the, when the dilaton is heavier than the mass of the B. And, uh, and then for, for this other scan with the larger values of the color, you know, this region is, is mostly untouched yet. But, you know, for example, in uh, uh, future additional Z pole measurements, if, if, you know, if there is an FCC that is living again, you know, sitting again for many years on the Z pole, you know, they would be able to uh, exclude, for example, uh, you know, basically all, all of the blue uh, parameter space here. And then, you know, uh, some future versions of the, I think it's just LHCB, uh, you know, is going to mostly exclude uh, all of these, uh, uh, all of these low mass points. Okay. And then this is the constraint from the coupling to the photon. Okay. So again, you know, this situation is similar there. Current experiments are actually not very constraining yet, but we are pretty close. And, uh, the uh, upcoming experiments are going to be able to probe this whole setup. Okay, so what are the experimental signals? Again, there is a light dilaton that should be observed and large regions are already excluded, like I said. They also have these annoying W and ZKK modes. They don't play a role in stabilizing the hierarchy. It would be really nice to get a version of this theory where we could get rid of these. We don't have any top partners. Okay, the construction is, uh, similar to RS, but again, you know, I want to emphasize that the Higgs is elementary here. And in that sense, you know, uh, both the physics and the signals are very different from uh, the ordinary, you know, minimal composite Higgs RS type models. Okay, so now what I promised, yes, uh, the cutoff, yes. So uh, we, we shouldn't have a very high inflation scale here. Okay, because if we, uh, if we have a high inflation scale, then you know we are going to lose the sensitivity uh, to the Higgs weather uh, in the potential. So that is going to tell you, you know, basically what you know the the mass scale of the inflation should be, such that the Hubble parameter turns out to be uh, electroweak. And then our assumption was that you know the cutoff shouldn't be much higher than whatever the scale is that is setting uh, inflation. Otherwise, you know, it would drive up. You know, sort of the generic inflation scale uh, above the electroweak scale. Okay, so that's uh, that's basically our sort of our main bound, and it's kind of hard to see how to uh, get much above this. Okay, um, okay, there are other constraints. The energy density should tr should uh, in the vacuum should really be negative, so that will just give you some bound on what the ADS curvature uh, of the theory should be. And again, you know, there's the the, the discussion about the uh, about the CC problem. So again, you know, this mechanism on its own doesn't solve the CC problem, but it could just be solved by ordinary anthropics, as long as the maximal CC in the anthropics doesn't overwhelm the negative uh, cosmological constant at the Goldberger wise minimum. Okay, so 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 that gives you. Uh, now, one thing that I haven't talked about yet is uh, what happens when you have, uh, you know, zero Higgs web, yes, or, 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 or very small Higgs web. So, so you really wanna make sure that you're actually crunching, yes, both for large Higgs webs and for, for zero Higgs web. Okay, so, so for large Higgs webs, 
you know, you do have, you know, this potential that, you, you know, is really rolling down. So, so you know, the classical rolling will uh, overwhelm the, uh, the Hubble uh, and, uh, and, and that's fine. However, around zero Higgs web, the situation is more subtle, yes, because in that case, you only have a chi to the fourth term, yes. And then you are really worried whether uh, you are gonna get stuck there yes, in an eternal inflating uh, uh, phase. Okay, so we really want to avoid that region here, yes, around the very small uh, chi to the fourth. So that's, I guess, you know, also related to, uh, to Michaela's question. So, so we want to avoid that. So what we can do is we can add a little bit of an extra uh, physics that is actually going to make sure that, uh, that you are not gonna be ending up for, uh, in that region with the small chi. Okay, so, 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 so what we did is we added on, and I, for example, we, you know, the imagination that we had was, so that's uh, uh, basically following a story of Geraldine and uh, von Harling, uh, where they realized that, uh, you know, if you have a gauge group in the bulk, then the scale at which the gauge group is going to blow up is actually going to be dilaton dependent. So if you just add an extra, for example, just QCD, just for the sake of it, if you just add QCD into the bulk, if you look at the running, for example, of the QCD scale itself, yes, so, so it is actually going to be dilaton dependent. So the dynamical scale of QCD, it, you know, it is, you know, it is an explicit breaking of uh, conformality and it is going to be dilaton dependent, okay? So, so if you just add an extra gauge group in the bulk, you know, that is essentially like adding an extra explicit breaking term in, the, uh, 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 in, your, in your dilaton potential. Now, for uh, as long as you are at, at relatively large values of the dilaton potential, your, uh, your, your, your uh, explicit breaking effects will be completely negligible, but below that, you know, the explicit breaking will become really large and just the description in terms of a dilaton is going to break down. And effectively it's going to act as a, uh, as a negative mass uh, for the dilaton. And it's, it's basically just going to push you away from that region. Okay, so that's, uh, uh, that would be sort of a way of making sure that, uh, that you are also excluding the region where the Higgs wave is zero or very, very tiny. Okay, so um, I guess that's it. So I think I'm probably out of time, so I probably should, shouldn't. But if um, with the reaction, so um, uh, if I you want to sketch it quickly, okay, uh, okay, very good. So, it could be good. So that was, uh, uh, I just have a few slides about a, a related idea, yes, which is, you know, trying to apply this crunching uh, mechanism to the cosmological constant problem itself and not to the hierarchy problem, okay? So, so here again, now the idea will be, so we are not gonna say anything about the Higgs, we will only deal with the CC and we will still assume that, you know, there is a multiverse, the different patches, but now we will be focusing on the value of the cosmological constant. And uh, what, uh, what we will try to achieve is that the patches with small positive cosmological constant are long lived and patches with large negative cosmological constants will, uh, large, sorry, large positive cosmological constants, the ones that you would normally think are uh, inflating are actually crunching quickly, okay? And again, you know, rather than doing statistics or anthropics, you know, what we will find is that the, uh, the, the parts of the, the, the patches that uh, have a large CC are just very short lived, Yes, and they, you know, the, their lifetime will depend on how large the CC is. Okay, so the, again, the idea will be very similar to uh, what I outlined here. So there, uh, we assume that there is a hidden CFT coupled to every patch. And the important point is now we are going to be comparing the broken and the unbroken phases of the CFT itself. So in the hot phase, the CFT of the CFT, the cosmological constant will be vanishing because you know, well, it's, a, it's an unbroken CFT in the hot phase. But of course, you know, it doesn't mean there's no energy because there's a T to the four energy there, yes. But the CC itself is, is vanishing, yes. 
in the true ground state of the CFT, there will be again the assumption of a large negative cosmological constant. Okay, so so the assumption will be that again, you know, there is some mechanism that is a uh, 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 that is uh, going to populate the uh, the multiverse. Okay, during inflation. So here is your inflationary scale, and you are going to be populating many vacua. But one important assumption here will be that that there's only going to be a maximum amount of spread in these uh, 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 in the cosmological constants. Clearly, that's needed because you know if we don't have a maximum CC that uh, uh, that in in these different patches, then you know the fixed amount of uh, change in the vacuum energy that you are going to get from the phase transition when you go from the unbroken to the broken phase of the CFT, you know, you will not be able to crunch all the patches. So, so that's going to be an important assumption that there's a maximal value. And uh, after inflation, so this is the kind of, uh, uh, after inflation, you will have reheating and uh, you assume that you reheat to uh, a temperature that is uh, higher than the maximal value of the cosmological constant. Okay, so then every patch is going to be radiation dominated. And as the universe is cooling down, the patches with the highest uh, cosmological constants will re enter inflation first and they will trigger the phase transition in that particular CFT. Okay. And uh, uh, very good. So this is again, you know, just a little cartoon. So for example, if the CC is 100 GeV, as yes, you have reheating and you, uh, you know, you, you have a little bit of radiation domination and then you re-enter the secondary inflation and then you crunch. For our patch, yes, this hasn't happened yet. Okay, so we are now just about to enter the secondary inflation, yes, and the crunch is still ahead of us. So it's a beautiful vision of our future. Okay, so the, the essential part of our work was to find the appropriate crunching sector. Okay, so again, what it should do is it should turn a large positive CC into a negative CC. Okay, and it should not have happened for our universe yet. So the milli electron volt scales should not have crunched yet. Yes, if it has crunched, okay, that's, uh, that, that would be bad. Yes, so the milli electron volt should met, be metastable. However, the amount of energy that uh, uh, the, the energy difference between the two vacua should be much bigger than milli electron volt because we want to be able to crunch, you know, CCs of the order of a TeV, for example. Okay, so that tells you that this phase transition that is happening, that uh, that uh, will be uh, uh, triggering the the crunching, should be strongly supercooled. Yes. So so meaning that the actual temperature where the phase transition happens should be much below uh, the so-called critical temperature where the two vacua have the same energies. And it turns out that, uh, you know, warp extra dimensions or, you know, conformal field theories have exactly this property. Usually that's considered a bug. Like in RS, it's very hard to get from the, uh, uh, from, from, from the black hole phase into the normal RS phase at low temperatures. There you have the uh, where you have the IR brain actually materializing, uh, emerging from the. Now for us, this is exactly the kind of thing that we need, yes, because you know we are not using this warp extra dimension to model our world or solve the hierarchy problem. You know, it's just a CFT, yes. It's just it's just a sector that has a super cool phase transition. Okay, so that's basically what we did. So we assume that there's a hidden CFT again broken phase, large negative CC, high temperature phase, vanishing CC. And we assume that we start out after reheating with a very large temperature. And uh, again, you know, then the, the patches with the largest CC will re-enter inflation. So now this one also has some experimental predictions, namely the fact that in our patch, we have to have a CFT that is in the hot phase. Okay, we have to have a CFT that is in the hot phase, and that's telling you that there has to be uh, some dark radiation around us. One sec, one sec. So we live in the hot, in no. the unbroken phase. Because but in the unbroken phase, there is no deal because at Because we all. haven't crunched yet. Sorry, but in the unbroken phase, there's, there is no deal at all. 
Right. So I, I didn't say that uh, in this in this model there is no. Ah, okay. So is uh... again, you know, the, the experimental prediction is that uh, we have a you know we have dark radiation. Ah, okay. Right. So, right, so okay. well, I mean the two models are not exactly okay, so the same. Yes. Okay. Sorry, I lost. Uh... I mean they are similar. Yes. Okay. Similar sorry. ideas, but again, you know, this has here we have to be in the phase where the CFT is in the hot phase. Yes, because we haven't crunched yet. So we should not see the dilaton, yes. Dark scatter. I'm sorry? Who tells you what's the temperature of this dark scatter? Well, what is the oh, temperature? What, temp well, well, so 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 we know what the you know what the delta n effective should be, yes. Yeah, but and it will depend on uh, the ratio of uh, dark to visible sector temperature. Right. Yeah. Who fixes that? So you know there is an upper value, yes, which is ah, okay, which is the you know, which is our temperature, yes, it could be lower there. Right, but what we know is that you know the you know the delta n effective is what is what matters, and that is telling you actually. So I didn't explain that. It's telling you that uh, it's actually related to the maximal value of the cosmological constant that you can crunch away. So that's actually really interesting that that this scale, the square root of the Planck scale, and uh, the uh, the temperature of the CFT is actually giving you the maximal value of the CC that you can crunch away. So, you know, if you assume this is 10 to the minus three, which is the maximum possible, yes, then, you know, you get something of the order of 100 GV. And of course, the, the last prediction is that the universe is about to crunch. All right, very good. So, again, I showed you a new approach, the hierarchy and the CC problems. And again, the idea was that we have these different patches, that there is a multiverse and, uh, and the patches that are sort of, you know, not don't have the type of uh, uh, parameters, either the Higgs mass or this cosmological constant, they are going to be crunching relatively quickly. Yes? And only the patches uh, where, uh, you know, the physics is sort of standard would be the type uh, that are surviving for a long time. Now, of course, you know, yeah, so is this different than anthropics? You know, I, I agree, you know, that's a little bit of a philosophical question is, yes. you know, I mean, it feels to us somewhat different, but, you know, if you say, okay, I translated, you know, the condition for, you know, uh, you know, why is this a habitable universe to why have we lived very, very long? Yes, I mean, that is, you know, that is in fact what we are assuming, yes, that we want to have regions of universe where you can live for a very long time. Yes, in the other regions, you know, they just crunch, but you know, early on, of course, you don't know what was going on there. Okay, so again, uh, we we used in both cases, you know, uh, CFT dynamics. In the case of the uh, of the solution of the hierarchy problem, there was a dilaton that was mixed with the Higgs, and it, the experimental prediction was that there has to be a light dilaton that is less than 10 GeV and weakly coupled. And again, you know, this this region of the dilaton parameters is fully testable, and uh, you know should be discovered or excluded probably within ten years or so. And uh, you know we have a similar solution for the CC. And in that case, you know the main uh, prediction is that we have this hidden hot CFT that would give you delta and effective. All right. Thank you very much, Shaba. Other questions or comments? Please. Yeah, very nice. Uh, I wonder, it would be philosophically very pleasing to solve with the same mechanism both problems. Right. Did you try to put well, them together? Well, you see, I mean, right now, you know, one of them needs us to be in the hot phase and the other one needs us exactly. to be in the broken phase. So Th that's why I was confused so, about your inequality. So, you know, it's uh, we don't yeah. really have one, but yeah, so that will, I, I totally agree, of course. Yeah. They would love that. They would yeah, love that. it would be somehow, if you have to mix the Weinberg solution right. with that, know. For that, it would be. I know, be, I mean, look, I mean, yeah. what we are saying is, you know, this is a new direction and you know, this is the first you know, first attempt and uh, um, yeah, yeah, maybe yeah. there are, there hopefully are better ways, you know. Yeah, and I, as I mentioned before, in the context of the hierarchy problem here too, 
I mean, Weinberg predicted the right. Mille V scale right. numerically. Right. So we are not predicting, you know, what, you know, at most we can say that, you know, if we put in Weinberg scale, we get something that is around the TV scale. That's, that's the only sort of interesting numerics that is happening here. I mean, I think that's, it's pretty interesting. You know, it didn't have to be like that. Does so could have been so that. You're saying if you input a hundred jets. Sorry, if, if I input here 10 to the minus three electron volt, get I get a something. Hundred, then I get out. Then, get then I get exactly, TV. yes. Then, then right. you have to justify why, why, the, why I chose a TV, exactly. Right. So that. That 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 I find less, right. you know, less convincing than, than the, right. the galactic, right? Principle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 No, we we didn't, you know. I mean, I think we, we really read it more in this direction that you know this would be sort of you know knowing that this could be ten to the minus three, yes, that this tells you that there's gonna be some new physics around you know the hundred GV range. Which solves the rest of the cosmological constant problem because we can only solve it up to there. Yeah. Otherwise, you have, uh, I assume you have lots of predictions for the Higgs factor in your first. Right. Yeah, I think so. I mean, we, we didn't look at the very details yeah. of, the, uh, of the couplings of the Higgs, but yeah, they should be all modified slightly. So. Other questions? Uh, Nicole question related to the one I already asked. So um, in order to have a small dilaton mass with respect to the confine, confining scale, right. so instead of decreasing the function from what I understand, you decrease the quartic. Right. Uh, but uh, in, the, in the 4D, uh, in the CFT, uh, the quartic uh, is, is is it not set by the gauge coupling, which is uh, strong, which is bigger than one? Um, so, so, so if you're asking whether you expect that quartic to be order one or yes. bigger, yes. Yes. Okay. I agree with that. Mm. In fact, if I remember correctly, it's not even one. Is I think it's sixteen pi squared, okay. as far as I remember. So yes, there is a. That's what I'm saying. There is a little hierarchy problem there. Yes. Mm. So normally you don't expect, it, you know, well, we wrote that paper with Brando and, uh, and collaborators, yes, that we, normally you don't expect there to be a light dilaton. Yes. And the lighter it is compared to the scale, you know, the more tuning you get, yes. Okay. In your case, um, could you uh, re-explain uh, why you need such a light dilaton? Oh, so so that was you know just you know the specific choices for the parameters that gave you the right. Uh, where is it? What is the simplest simplest way to understand it? Um, let's see. Okay, very good. Yes. So, so first of all, there was here, there, there, you know, so there's H over chi. Yes. So that's uh, already giving you a suppression factor. So, so, so you see, you know, naturally it wants to be of the order of the Higgs mass. Yes. That you would be more or less happy with that. Maybe you would still argue about it, whether, you know, it's a factor of five of yes. But then there's a hierarchy here. Yes. Because the H rev over chi min. Yes, this has to be small. And that's related to these unwanted uh, KK modes, yes. And there's a large M here, yes, which is, you know, whatever, five, 10, yes. And then there's the mixing angle, okay. So all of those are working towards, you know, reducing the, the mass of the dilaton for you. Okay. I don't know, I, I don't have a, a more intuitive explanation than you know you look you, you calculated it and every factor wants to make it lighter and lighter and lighter <laughs> so i actually have a question related to this so for such modular masses so because you mentioned if you worry that we don't tax it the phase we can always use a geraldine and right, benedict right, right. but is this so from the parameters naively i would say this is needed no it right. is needed yes you you, you 
actually it, need that. It is needed. Yes, there is absolutely. no way you do it without it. Absolutely. So in our case, it is needed. Yes. Okay. Now the question is: Is it QCD or is it some other gauge group? Yes. So you you know you could go the minimal route and try to do QCD, but then you have KK gluons and you know. Yeah, because then I was going to ask with right. QCD. Like also the fin of this dilaton would right. be different from the one you right. showed or right. so so it's probably best to just put in some other okay. you know because we really don't care about what is it that is nudging the dilaton out of that uh, that region so it's probably the best is to just add some other gauge group but you know we did we did look at qcd and you of know, it's possible it lowers as far as i remember it lowers <clears throat> the cutoff scale a little bit um so that's that's another reason why it's better to not use qcd itself Okay, I see things. Other questions? Maybe from Zoom? I don't. Got tired of, I guess, of <laughs> well, we had a lot of discussion even during. Okay, I don't see any. So all I right. thank Chaba thank and all the participants of this week again. Yeah. And the organizers. And see you next Monday.